Good morning to all of you out there in Facebook land and on YouTube. We welcome you to our virtual worship experience here at the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church of East Point, Georgia, one of God's greatest churches. And where we are affectionately known and we humbly say we are the greatest church on this side of Stone Mountain. We welcome you to our fellowship on this Lord's Day. God bless you. Uh, to all of you out there, we thank you for tuning in and for joining us. I would like to take this time to wish all of you a happy Memorial Day weekend as we celebrate and give honor to those who sacrificed and gave their lives for this country and for this people. We thank you for your bravery, we thank you for your sacrifice, and we wish all of you a very happy, safe, and blessed Memorial Day weekend. We're asking all of our members that you will continue in your faithfulness and commitment to God and also in uh, thinking of others as far as keeping our members and our friends lifted in prayer. We know that we have not gotten them quite on the other side of this pandemic, this crisis that this world now faces, but we still know that God is still in charge and God is still faithful through it all. And so it's our prayer that you are being kept by the same measure of grace which has kept us thus far. And we pray that you shall continue to be safe and well kept and in good health wherever you may be by God and his grace. Again, we thank you for joining us on this day. Let me just announce uh, that we are uh, about to get into the celebration season here at DePaul. Uh, we know that every June, we celebrate a great, a great time in the history of our ministry uh, in regards to our pastoral celebration. This year we will celebrate Dr. Clayton Eugene Taylor's 54th pastoral anniversary here at St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. And in Ohio, we are so thankful that God has given us a great leader, a great pastor in the person of Dr. Taylor, and we thank him for the great leadership that he has expressed and shown to this ministry over the years, 54 long years that he's labored in the vineyard here at St. Paul. And so therefore, honor is definitely worthy. And so we're going to do that uh, this year, although we are things are different for us than they've ever been before, but we're still gonna pay honor where honor is due. Amen. With that being said, I want to invite all of you out uh, for this to be something of our first type of fellowship that we're able to somewhat get back together just a little bit on the first Sunday in June, that is June the 7th at the 10 o'clock hour. We will have a parking lot uh, service. We'll also be airing that uh, via Facebook Live as well as our YouTube. But we want to invite all of you out to come and share and, uh, and honor the Lord as well as honor the man of God on that day out in our parking lot. We will be practicing safe social distancing measures uh, to make sure that everyone remains safe and in good health. But we do want to invite you out for our park, parking lot service on the first Sunday in June to celebrate our pastor's 54th pastoral anniversary. We are looking forward to a great time in the name of the Lord, and I look forward to seeing all of you who are able to attend this event. God bless you and keep you in our prayer. Know that you are constantly in our thoughts and in our prayers. Oh, how we miss our members and our friends, and we cannot wait until we have the opportunity to come back together again. God bless you. We shall proceed with our worship service this morning. First, we'll have a selection by a songstress, uh, Ms. Ayanna Sellers, followed by our scripture and our prayer by Reverend Roger Smith, then followed by another selection by Sister Ayanna, and then we'll hear the word of God from our senior pastor, Dr. Clayton Eugene Taylor. God bless and keep you is our prayer.
it is called to the elders and to the flock. Verse 5, or chapter 5, verse 1. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them because you must, not because, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those who entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders, all of you. Clothe yourself with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Verse 7, cast away all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praises be to God. Let us pray. Father God, dear Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we humble ask today for your forgiveness. Lord, we know that we have not done what you have told us to do, and we have done some things that you have told us not to do. We know, Lord, that these things were not mere suggestions or recommendations, but commandments of you that come directly from the mouth of God. For example, Lord, in creation, you asked mankind to dominate over all that you created. We failed in our responsibility after being given authority over all that you created. We've polluted the streams, the lakes, and the rivers. We've destroyed the air in which we breathe with toxins and gases. We ask for your forgiveness. We have not done the things that you've asked us to do in sacrifice and sacrament and service to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome strangers, bringing good news to the poor, freeing the captives and the oppressed. We have neglected matters of law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. But this, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we are quick to quote scripture in times like this, especially 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people will call by name and we emphasize prayer. But Lord, there's sin in there, and wickedness is sin. And sometimes we don't discuss that. But sin is the cause of real problems that we have going on even now. We must stop sinning. Turn away from it. God hates sin. We won't even admit to our sin. We claim that it's a whole star conspiracy theory. God still has the whole world in his hands. He either causes things to happen or permits them to happen because of our sin. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We confess our sins because your word says if we are just to forgive us if we confess even now. Lord, during this pandemic, we come still in celebration of the dawning of a new day, a season in which we honor our graduates. We honor veterans who have served faithfully. 
Lord God, we pause in this hour for serving saints that have had the courage to preach truth over power and those who need help because these are difficult times where Christians somehow seem under a witness protection program. For Lord, we're thinking and we know that you're looking for real Christians for such a time as this. And Lord, we pray for our pastor and first lady, our co-pastor and his first lady. We pray for all who call upon the name Jesus, Lord. But no matter what we're going through, we know that Jesus is the answer. The mighty name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. We said thank you, Lord. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and amen. 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 amen.
God bless you. We thank you for those beautiful selections. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Another day that God has made to come down to the preach the word. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1 and verses 1 through 5, you'll find the words of my text. And I will read it from the NIV translation. It says that the prophecy that Habakkuk, the prophet, received. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you will not listen? I'll cry out to you violence, but you do not say. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There's strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked him in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. The Lord responds in verse 5 and says, Look at the nation and watch, and be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. That's the text I'm going to use as the foundation for this Islamic discourse today. And my subject is we will understand it better by and by. Uh -huh. We will understand it better by and by. Uh -huh. My brothers and sisters, when we observe the moral climate of our times, and when we look around at the landscape of modern day humanity, we have to admit that our world is in a mess. Yeah. And not only is our world in a mess, but in the words of my little granddaughter, Genesis, who's about to graduate from high school this year, our world is in a hot mess. That's right. Then I add that all over the world, and all the way down from the White House to the courthouse, the schoolhouse, the church house, and sometimes your house and my house, and even in the outhouse, our nation and our world is in a hot, stinking mess. And brothers and sisters, when you look around, we can see evidence of this all around us. The escalating violence in our neighborhoods and the church shooting like the one a few years ago at the Emmanuel Henry Church there in Charleston, South Carolina. And the senseless murders of many of our unarmed African American youth like Trayvon Martin in Central Florida and Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. And just recently, Ahmad Aubrey, mm. down there in Brunswick, Georgia. Amen, amen. These are all indications that our world, brothers and sisters, is in a hot, stinking mess. Uh -huh. And not only that, but when we think about the vast number of people who have been affected, either directly or indirectly, by this invisible and deadly, COVID-19 virus, which has caused us, in the words of Ernest Hemingway, to be like a colony of ants on a burning log. This too is an indication that our world is in a hot, stinking mess. And then to make matters worse, right here in America, we have the most uncouth, unethical, undignified, unqualified, unprofessional, and unpresidential person to ever hold the office of president 
in the United States. Amen, amen. I mean, that's rather than a swear fool. Every time he opens his mouth, he has a diarrhea of lies amen. and a constipation of truth. Amen. And then plus the fact, he is surrounded by a bunch of political clowns in his cabinet, Brother Walker, who are just as morally corrupt yeah, yeah. and just as legally insane as he is. Amen. Amen. That's right. And then I heard someone say that when you have that many political clowns in office, you can't help but have a servant. Now, I know that the right of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 4 say that the Lord has made everything for his purpose and even the wicked for the day of trouble. But then my brothers and sisters when we look at all of the bad things, the evil things that are happening in our world today it has all many of us to become discouraged despondent and depressed. And then for the most part, it has called many of us to even question the sovereignty of God. Well, right. As a matter of fact, many of us are just like this prophet here in our text. This prophet the back of who was one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. But when the Habakkuk observed the violence and all of the iniquity and all of the bad things that were happening in the world during his day and time, it worried him. It bothered him. It frustrated him. And so when Habakkuk got the word that the Chaldeans who were a wicked and sinful nation was about to invade and take over the nation of Judah. Habakkuk had about as much as he could take because he knew that Judah was on the verge of being destroyed. Mm -hmm. But somewhere or another he got the report that the Chinese army was more powerful and greatly outnumbered the army of Judah. Mm. In fact, the Bible says right in chapter 1, you read it in this book of Habakkuk, that the soldiers in the Chaldean army had great military skill, and that their war horses were swifter than leopards mm. and more fierce than the evening wolves. And you know, Habakkuk was so burdened by what he saw, by what was going on, that he pleaded to God to bring swift judgment, to bring fast judgment, immediate judgment on the Chaldean. But it seemed like God remained silent and did nothing at all. Habakkuk was puzzled. He was perplexed. He was baffled and bewildered over the fact that God's judgment on the Chaldeans was delayed. And so in verses 2 through 4 in chapter 1, Habakkuk issued a subpoena to God in order to question the sovereignty of God. He cried out in desperation, Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou would not hear. Every cry out unto thee of violence, and thou would not say, Why, Lord, do you show me iniquity and call me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and that those that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack, and judgment never go forward. For you see, the wicked do take advantage of the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceeded. 
brothers and sisters, a pack of the Ashley God in so many words, a series of questions. Lord, why? Why do you allow an ungodly nation like the Chaldeans to get away with their godly action? Lord, why? Why do you allow the wicked to prosper and the righteous to suffer? Lord, why do you allow evil to exist here on planet Earth? Lord, why do you allow some innocent people to be incarcerated and then allow some guilty people to be exonerated? Lord, why? Do you allow me and other believers to live a life of pain, a life of hardship, a life of suffering while others who don't even know you, who worship idols and who don't even have a relationship with you, but yet it seems like they live a life of luxury and on flowery beds of ease. Brothers and sisters, these were some issues that Habakkuk had a problem with. In fact, these were some issues, Pastor Christopher, that he simply could not comprehend nor understand. But when you pass forward to chapter 2 in the book of Habakkuk, you will see when Habakkuk went up into a watchtower where he prayed and waited for God to respond. Oh, brothers and sisters, that I stand here today, I will submit to you that every child of God, every believer, ought to have a watchtower. Right. And then can I tell you you don't necessarily have to be a Jehovah Witness in order to have a watchtower. For right. symbolically speaking, a watchtower is any place that you call your praying ground. A watchtower is your secret closet where you go in and you shut the door and you pray to the Father in secret. And your father would see it in secret, shall reward you openly. Well, well. Can I tell you, a watchtower is your war room where you arm yourself with prayer power so that no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. I remember going to the movies a few years ago with my wife and we saw this Christian movie called The War Room. And I thought it was a rather amazing movie. It was about this spiritual black woman by the name of Miss Clara, who was a great prayer warrior. And uh, Miss Clara went to work in the home of this white couple whose marriage was on the rocks and whose family structure was rapidly falling apart. But Miss Clara was a praying woman and she had a special room in the house that she called the war room. For she prayed mightily day and night for this family. And eventually she challenged this couple to establish their own war room. And consequently, through the power of prayer, this couple was able to resolve their differences. They were able to repair their broken marriage, and they were able to keep their family structure from falling apart. And I said that to say this, that this couple learned a great lesson in the war room that they would have never learned in nobody's classroom. Well. And that is 
they learn that there is power in prayer. And then they also learn that the family that prays together is the family that stays together. So what I'm suggesting here, brothers and sisters, amen, uh, it doesn't matter what you call your watchtower, your train ground, or your secret closet, or your war room. The important thing is that whenever and wherever you pray, you got to pray with consistency. You got to pray with transparency. You got to pray with persistency. You got to pray with expectancy. You got to pray with fervency. And then you got to pray in faith, believing that whatever you're praying for is already a done deal. Not only that, but you must pray in faith, believing that God is. And that he is a reward of those who diligently and seek him. Yes, we are now, brothers and sisters, when the back would have been to the watchtower to pray, to petition God. God responded to the back of person by explaining to him three things. First of all, God explained to the back that he had a plan for the nation of Judah. Secondly, he explained to him that he had a timetable in which to work out the plan. And then thirdly, he explained to Habakkuk that he wants the battle to be patient and watch the plan Unfold. Well, well, well. Listen now, brothers and sisters, it's right there in the text of you, verse 5 of chapter 2, where, 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 where the Lord answered the back and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon the text that he may run that we did. Well. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Oh, brothers and sisters, if you will permit me to paraphrase God's response to Habakkuk's question, God is saying to Habakkuk in this, listen, Habakkuk. I know you don't understand why the wicked and the evil do will seem to prosper. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about the prosperity and the success of the wicked because their so-called success and their so-called prosperity is only temporary and is only for a season. What you need to do is think about what David said in the 37th number of Psalms, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green earth. But you trust in the Lord and do good. Yeah. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Yeah. Listen good to me about it. I know you don't understand why how the rich and the greedy are always taking advantage of the poor and the needy. But don't worry about that either. Because you need to fast follow into the New Testament with your prophetic sanctified imagination and read Galatians 6 and 7 where the Apostle Paul said, Be not deceived. God 
is not mine. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Listen to me, Habakkuk. Listen real good, man. I know you don't understand why I have not pronounced immediate judgment from the Chaldean for that imminent invasion on Judah. But you know, I got a reason for that. I got a purpose for that. I want to teach my people, the people of Judah, some very pertinent and valuable lesson. First of all, I want to teach the people of Judah that I am a sovereign God. And that I have a plan and I got a purpose for their life. And just like I told the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29, 11, I want to tell them the very same thing. For I know the plans I have for them. And their plan to prosper them and not to harm them. Their plan to give them hope and the future. Oh, brothers and sisters, as I stand here today, I will submit to you that in life now, God had a plan and a purpose for all of our life. Amen. And we must learn to trust the plan, follow the plan, and stick with the plan even when we don't understand the plan. Right. Yeah. And in the words of that great theologian Charles Spurgeon, he said, God is too good to be unkind. He is too wise to be mistaken. And when we cannot trace his hand, we've got to trust his heart. Yes, all right. But you see, brothers and sisters, we hear the fact that no matter what we go through in life, God knows what is best for us. Amen. He always has our best interest in at heart. Amen. Secondly, my brother and sister, God said to the back and so many words, now, I want to teach Judah that I am a sovereign God and I move and I operate according to my own timetable. And my timetable is not like theirs. My timetable is not like man's timetable. But you see, a thousand years in my sight are what as yesterday when, when it is past or is a watch in the night. And you know, my brothers and sisters, that would suggest to us that God is not locked in, nor is he governed by Eastern Standard Time, or Central Standard Time, or Mountain Standard Time, or Pacific Standard Time, and not even Daylight Saving Time. But rather, can I tell you, he is governed by his own timetable. That is why you can never accuse God of being too late or too early. But the only thing we can say about God in that lesson is for a lot of people saying in that song that He is an on time God. Oh, yes, He is. Yes. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I would submit to you we must not go into a panic mode. When it seems like God is moving too slow in answering our prayers, we must not go off on the deep end. When it seems like God has abandoned us or has reneged on his promise to never forsake us or ever leave us alone. Because the truth of the matter is, for Grandmama told you a long time ago, you can't hurt God. And he may not come when you want him to. Yes, sir. But one thing for sure, Brother Walker, 
He's always on time. And thirdly, God says to the back in so many words, I want to teach Judah again that I am a sovereign God. And therefore, they must learn how to wait patiently for my plan and purpose to be fulfilled in their life. You see, they need to know that whatever I have planned and purpose for their life, though it seemed like a long time coming, I will surely bring it to pass. We see that there's no enemy that rise up against them that can frustrate my plan for them. Because if they just learn, Pastor Chris, how to wait patiently on me, in due time, I will fight that battle and I will make that enemy behave and leave them alone. And there's no devil and no demon in hell that can block their blessings or steal their joy or rob them of their peace of mind because if they just learn how to wait, wait patiently on me in due time, I will shower them the top of a blessing from on high in due time. I will give them a joy that the world can give and the world can take away in due time. I will give them the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding and in due time I will give them victory over all of their enemies. Oh, my brothers and uh, my sisters, I come to tell you when you're going through your trials, your troubles, your temptations, and your testing, you need to learn, and I'm just about to hear, how to wait. I need to wait patiently on the Lord. Because you see, there are some great benefits when you wait on the Lord. But David said there, you read it in Psalm 27 and 14, he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. And then Isaiah said, but Smith, that in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew that strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. And then they shall walk and then uh, not faint. And so my brothers and sisters, uh, I don't know what any of you out there in Facebook are going through at this very moment. But I would admonish you to trust God and to wait patiently on Him. You may not understand now what you're going through, but you will understand it later. And I am a living witness that you will understand it all by and by. And so finally, my brothers and my sisters, I don't want to burden any of you too long, but as I bring this little tomorrow discourse to a conclusion, I will wrap everything up by reminding you that our God is a sovereign God. And because our God is a sovereign God, that should have been that we don't always understand his strange and mysterious way. For I heard somebody saying that God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He planned his footstep on the sea. Stone. And you know, because our 
Oh, man. 
that there must be a better day. There got to be a speed.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Meet us at the park.